You know, that's nasty church people. These are some of the most vile people on earth. Why? Because they don't know. They're not being, being polite is not being nice. It's not being pleasant. It's not being empathetic. It's setting up a box of rules where you can call yourself the good guy or, or, or have the moral high ground. But that's not morality. That's not what morality is. Because there are a lot of things that have nothing to do with the word you're using, the fact that you're judging or not, because everybody's judging everybody. The question is, what's the judgment? And, and what does your behavior make them judge you as? If you go out of your house and all you've gotten from me is smiles and pleasantries, and if maybe you got a criticism, but you come at it, come at me with it, with it in good faith, and not with a bunch of attitude and, and just trying to hurt me, and we all know what that looks like, then I'm going to say, thank you for being my teacher. I had bubble gum on my shoe. I now know. Thank you, sir. But if you think that everybody that wants to talk to you is trying to hit on you or is trying to do you harm or is trying to this or that and the other, if, if you think that every interaction, if with ev there's a tree, is this person being positive or negative? And if you think that because a person's black, everything that comes out of their mouth is going to be negative, or if because a person's a male, or if because a person's a female, everything out of their mouth is going to be stupid, or if because a person's old, they're going to be out of touch and not know what they're talking about. Or, if, you know, there are 70-year-old men who make hit records that teenagers dance to. And there are teenagers that have philosophical points that have trumped people with PhDs. There are women who are men's rights activists, and there are male feminists. Stop looking at people's packaging and deciding that gives you permission to be an asshole. To not hear them or to try to silence their voice. I'm tired of all these male tears cups and, and all of their, and, and reacting to them with women's tears and feminist tears and what, what all that up. That's childishness. And we need to stop. It's immature as fuck. You need to deal with the actuality of situations the mechanism by which they go. How can we stop these cycles? I'm telling you right now. Stop trying to copy the, the black American civil rights struggle and copy and paste it onto women and gays and trans and whoever you got coming next. This is not control C, control V. Because Selling human beings and yelling a word while you flayed the flesh off of their bodies is a reason not to say the word nigger. That's real trauma attached to that. N the word retard, the word, I don't know, bitch or whatever, fag, doesn't measure up. And it's an insult to the people who had to go through that and their descendants to pretend that there aren't levels to this shit. When you can't pretend that there are levels to this shit, that's called you having a cognitive problem. You can't do logic right. You can't compare things. You're, you're something wrong with your vision. That means you think a, 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 an egg is the same size as, as, as a pumpkin. I guess I know there are small pumpkins. Watermelon. I guess there are small watermelons too. Whatever. Venus. Damn it. If you can't hear words and not go into an apoplectic fit, you need therapy. If you can't hear words without becoming angry or defensive or combative, you need fucking therapy. You do. You need someone to sit you down and iron out the pro the, the progress the process 
between when information comes in and what you turn it into. Because they have that little saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. For a reason. Now, I have been called the N-word plenty of times. Did I beat the crap out of that person? No, because it's not actual violence. And let me be clear, that word is as close as they come. I don't care. It does not give me permission to do violence to others. It does not give me permission to be abusive to others. If I, if I feel that person cannot be negotiated with, I stop speaking to them. But I will not negotiate with terrorists. And terror is to make somebody feel that they can't say something or you're going to burst into tears and they have to worry about your state. That is a threat. That is con coercive control. And in fact, it's what children do literally. Babies do that. Little, not babies actually, like probably toddlers or three-year-olds do that. It's a very small person game. But they're just small humans. So large humans do this game too. It's a game. Whether you have an excuse for doing it, trauma, and that is an excuse, it's valid. But if you have a life structure such as that you have experienced something that makes you react in this way, then you need healing so that you don't think this is an okay way to conduct yourself or comport yourself. That you don't even feel the need to do it. And if you can't even hear what I'm saying now without getting mad, you need therapy. I'm not insulting you. I'm being your friend, whoever you are. If you need to get to the end of the conversation without hearing what the other person has said, you need therapy. If you're just talking and waiting to attack, you're not even hearing the points that have been made. If you can't make the through line of the things that have just been said to you because you're so enraged, engaged, annoyed, whatever the word is, you need therapy. If you are a person who thinks that allowing a person who cries every time something they don't want to hear happens is okay, you are an enabler and you need therapy. These are, these are the facts. These are not comfortable facts. I tried to tell a story about what happened in Russia one day. And I spent probably up to 48 hours, I'm not sure about the amount of time, but two days trying to explain to people why just because you may have an opinion of something or you think that something is pejorative, there are still reasons to speak about it and not everything is an attack on you. Pardon me. Pause for the cause. If you can't hear words without crying or needing to, f or becoming combative or needing to silence or interrupt the other person, and I understand un interrupting people when you're arguing, but when you have to interrupt it so nothing comes out of their mouth, you just need to over talk them, and you feel this. I understand this feeling. Because it's this, I believe, I mean, I'm guessing, it's the same feeling, because people confuse it, me, me of it, so I, un I think I understand it. I have this feeling with the truth, with, with the tr truth, I hate that word, with reality. I need you to be accurate when you speak to me. I need for us to both have observable reality that, that aligns. I need the information of the facts to be agreed upon before we can move on to the next step. So that means the facts that need to be established. This is how I'm capable of seeing this pattern because these are the things that I need. And what I've noticed is that the people who have a problem with this and they become more and more of them as the calendars roll on, the calendar years add up, who need to stop 
before the first fact is established, but definitely before the second. If there's a comma in the sentence, they will attack you at that comma because you've already said one thing. If you establish two, fuck it, you've made a point. And that is not okay. If, 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 if a feminist hears something from a men's rights activist, that something that says men aren't the, the world's worst thing in the world, if a, if a men's rights activist, if, if a men's rights activist answers the question, why aren't there enough female CEOs with probably this for the same reason that there's not enough female trash men and enough female guys who dig out in the sewers? They don't want to do all, they don't want those jobs. So when you want all the fee CEO jobs, first first fill up the jobs in the sewers. First fill up the jobs in the high towers. First fill up the jobs on top of the oil rigs. When you're willing to do all of those jobs, then let's talk about the inequality in the boardroom, in the comfortable air conditioned spaces. But I don't believe you're for equality. This is why I don't believe that modern feminism in its current form is actually about making things even. That and the fact that there is no law that affects women that doesn't affect me, but there are laws that affect me that don't affect women. Whether feminists believe this or not, real men built this world for them. The Taj Mahal, the face that launched a thousand ships. Men do things that they would not. I do things that I would not do for myself, for my wife. I love that person. She is my person. My person. And she can do anything she wants. I won't do it for her. I'm not saying you just get them to do it yourself. But... I would never deny her an opportunity. But by that same token, if I did it for her, I would be, she wouldn't be living her, her best life. And we cuss at each other all more times in a day making jokes and fucking with each other than we have ever done collectively in anger. We call each other all kind of stupid names. And and all the names that most people would just be like you would be you would think I, if you just wrote it down you would think we hated each other, but we laugh so much. And the reason we do that is because we start from the premise that if we have to say something that the other person doesn't want to hear, we're trying to make them informed that they're making a mistake, that they're ill informed, that there's something they might not know. And you know what? If my wife tells me something that I don't already know. I don't go, bitch, I know. Bitch, I'm not a child. You can listen to the same song 15 times on repeat, but somebody can't tell you something you, if somebody can't tell you something you already know, bruh, that's a problem. That means you're making an offense when somebody was trying to give you a gift, a lesson, and if you can't learn something, if you think who are you to learn me anything? Then now you, you, wow. So you know everything, right? You know it all. And if, if you do know something somebody's already said, then you've just found confirmation on your knowledge. You found a place where you agree. And if you find a, pl if somebody says a thought that you already, a thing that you already believe to be true and uh, call it a fact in your head, even if it is a fact or not, you found a place of agreement, and if you still go, you can't tell me, I already know. If you say that in a negative way, you need therapy. You need therapy. You do. Because somebody saying something you already know should evoke nothing. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. True, true. That's, that's, that's the mature response. And if you want the sexy response, you got to go back to Idol Haley. Damn right. That's it. That should be the end of the conversation. Well, I mean, not the end of the conversation, but the, it should, it, I want to say end of the conflict, but there shouldn't have been one. Because somebody speaking to you is trying to get the thoughts in there, out of their head, into yours. And if you deny that, you're denying them. And don't tell somebody you love them or you care for them if you don't want to hear them out. 
if you need to stop them from speaking, you don't care for them because we're not our meat suits. We're not our pleasure. We're our thoughts. We're the collection of our reason. And if you can't hear, this is just a meat suit. I, this was luck. What's going on the outside? What's dangling? What's not? What, any outies? This and that and all that stuff. That's just gen that's the genetic lottery. Now, that gives my baseline. But the question is, what did I do with it? Did I try hard? Did I did I fail? Did I try again? Did I quit? What is my nervous system like? All of those other things involve me. How did other people perceive me? How did other people treat me? Did my parents raise me right? Did I go to a bad school system or a good one? Did I end up in some other stuff? Am I from a am I from privilege or from the underground? You know it's the underground. Come on, son. You know it's the underground. But I was also from privilege on paper until my life got rough, real rough in ways that most people wouldn't even know existed. But I don't run around making it other people's problem. My job is to, a lot of people think that if they've been hurt, that the world owes them something. The world does not owe you comfort nor understanding. Shout out to KS. The world does not owe you understanding. And it doesn't, the world doesn't move the velvet rope for you because, because you want a pity party. Nobody gets a pity party. Not me, not you, not nobody. And if, guess what? This world is hard to navigate. Like Rocky said, this world will beat you down like no opponent, like no person you have ever met. Life. It is competition. And if you're in a competitive field, it's even worse. Women want to know why. Some women want to know why other women don't want to be CEOs. It's because they're not as competitive as you. They don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want to be in the top of some Fortune 500 company. That sounds fucking psychotic to me. Bruh. You know how much pressure that is? And if you thrive in that pressure, more power to you, baby. But most women are like, yo, I can get somebody else to deal with this. Most men wish they could have that option. And that's why there are less women in corporate offices than men. That's the only reason. Because they're sane. Women are smarter. There's literally a Harry Belafonte song. That's right. The women are smarter. And guess what? They are. Because they've tricked men into doing everything for them. Feminists want to fuck that up for them. That's not my opinion. That's a lot of women's opinion. I mean, it's it's also. I mean, that's not really my opinion. I don't care. Honestly, I'm not a woman, so I don't have any fight dog in this fight. I don't get those privileges. I don't have the privilege of not wanting to be a CEO or not wanting to be the best I can be at whatever the hell it is I choose to do. The only other privilege I have is to check out and live under a bridge. And there's a lot of young men doing that these days. Check it out. And then when their so-called savior, the insult savior Jordan Peterson, sheds a tear. All these so-called super empathetic people, they make fun of him. They insult. Shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right are the, com are the psychic combat. And the shield is you can't touch me because I'm small and you're big. These are the elements. These are the tools used to bully other people psychically, whether intentionally or unintentionally. We live in a world where you have been told those things are okay, but if a man balls his fists up and shuts your mouth, it's not. The male weapons are not are off the table, but the female is allowed to attack in any psychic manner she chooses. We'll all, you know, understand if some woman pulls a knife and jumps a dude. We'll, we'll respond to that. But the psychic attack is where the woman sh shines. Women are better doctors. Women are better therapists. Women are better teachers. Women flock to these to academia. They have they, there's more women enrolled in college than men ever. You know, and like over you just go over time. Women get into college. You know, men, women go to college. Men tend to go to trade school or do other things. You know, I mean, there are some men there. Yes, I don't. When I say a blanket statement, I say more. Like it's, it's a sixty percent of women, it's forty percent of men, or whatever. How whatever the percentages are, but they're greater. 
I don't remember numbers very well. I have to have them in front of me, and I don't, and I don't care. But the point being is that there are many things that women excel at. I'm using women because feminism was the first template of, the, the first printing off the template, template, easy for me to say, of the black struggle. It was the first imprint made with that stamp. They took the mold of us and made feminism first, then gay rights, rights. And, and don't get me wrong, the right to married, I'm with it. Everybody should have the right to be with the person they love. I, I, I'm, I'm blessed with that privilege and so should everybody else. But everybody doesn't have the, sp the, the right to be in everybody's spaces and to take everybody's, and to make it so other people don't have their own unique and individual identities as well. And if you ask me about the complex, and this is just flashing through my mind, if you ask me about the complex issue of the, of the trans movement, if you got stalls in every bathroom, if you trans man, just go in a stall. If you're trans woman, just go in a stall. But brother, if you're out there winging your wingy, somebody gonna wanna cut that off because somebody's daughter's in there, man. And I, and I don't think that real true trans people are the problem. I think it's people who wanna ride this bus of, I can just call myself something and then be a sexual predator. And you guys are starting to learn how many real sexual predators are out there. You think it's just th that you think, well, why would anybody do that? And like you know, now we're starting to find out when we find these men in women's locker rooms. And there's a lot of these men that, that are failures in as being a male. And they want to win, win, win in women's sports. And they got no other. They, they still look like a whole man. If you walk by me and I can't tell you're a woman, that means I know you're on the whole hormones, all of them. That's what they mean when they say you need to be on the hormones for a year. Well, some of these guys take half their pills and they do it because they're still trying to be sporty and competitive and, and win. And I'm telling you, if, you, if you're a whole trans person, maybe right now, until we get this shit figured out, you got to give up sports. If, but everybody thinks that everybody needs to get everything. I have to sacrifice things for the things that I want sometimes. I have to decide not to pursue banking if I want to pursue finance or the other way around. I'm using words. I don't know. I don't know. You, you can't become, you know, the world's smallest man and the world's biggest bodybuilder at the same time. You have to pick it. I don't know any yoga master power lifters. It's, it's, it, there's just competing shit in the world. And everybody thinks that they're owed everything. You're not. Work hard to go get it. And some of us start way behind others. And I understand that there are systemic issues to work out. I'm not opposed to that concept. But you cannot control the system. You can control your input. You can control your response. You can't control what you hear, what you see, or what you go through. You can, con you can control if you come out of that as a mature adult or as a screaming toddler demanding the world be silenced every time you cry, demanding somebody bring you consolation every time you cry. That is an attack. That is, a, that is terrorism, literally. It is the definition of terrorism. And it's not okay. If you can't keep your, if you can't be in a conversation with making, without making somebody want to scream at you and fuck you up and or fuck you up because you want to demand their behavior, you want to demand they call you certain words, you want to demand that they say this and don't say that or they speak in certain speech patterns or you're so offended you don't get to be offended at the world. You don't get to be offended at other people's speech patterns of the way that they talk. You have the choice to hear their whole message, decide if it's, and uh, then you can decide if it's for ill intent or good. And even if they are giving you a message that's with ill intent, shouting at them and cutting them off and trying to make it so they can't breathe is gonna, is gonna escalate things, not de-escalate things. We need to be better, not worse. Stop listening. Start listening. I'm sorry. Start listening, and stop holding your lips shut with all of your with all of your vigor because you feel some perceived slight or offense. Stop acting like every every time somebody says something you don't want to hear, it's hurting you, because it's not. And if it is, you're a child and you're not ready to be out in the world, and you need. Therapy. You need it. Because if you can't cope with facts and reality, there is some kind of 
fixing here that need or maturing. Maybe you've regressed because of something you've seen or something you've been through. That is a complete possibility. And sometimes you don't even know what that is. Sometimes it might even be some shit that you think was nothing. It might be some three words that somebody said to you that, that just sunk in in the back of your head and it's fucked you up. And you need somebody to get to you to the point where somebody can say anything you want to hear, anything they want to say to you. And you go, and you can say, well, I'm considering what you're saying, but here's the points, here's the flaws I find in what you're saying. Here are the flaws of what you're saying. And you can calmly look for a flaw, just like you're looking through the, the for, for a book in the library. You're looking through the Dewey Decimal System or a file, a cal file cabinet. You said this, and then you said this, and these two things didn't, 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 con weren't congruent. Your thoughts didn't run, run straight here, so, but these three things cannot all be true, whatever it is. Stop using any means necessary to shut somebody up. Stop censoring people. It's not okay. It's not, it's not okay. It is the death of the human race.